I took the workshop back in 1974, mm -hmm. okay, did nothing with it. But five years later, before I became self-employed, I decided, good time to take the workshop again. Since then, I've taken the workshop probably 12 times in the last 40, 40 years, okay? Because if you don't use what you learn, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change in your life. Mm -hmm. So, um, whenever I find myself kind of slipping a little bit, I go back and take the workshop again. And that's what's nice about this course. You can go back and take that workshop as often as you want. Right. So Wes, you paid $360 12 times? Um, yeah. Wow. So you spent $4,000 on this course. I spent some money on this course. Well, sometimes she would help me on particular things. Uh -huh. Like some one time I was trying to teach um, my other um, insurance agents mm -hmm. and how I'm successful. And yes, I taught them some, some techniques about things I did in my business. But I thought it was important that they learn about self-image psychology as well. So I asked Shirley if I could teach some of this. And she says, yes, this is what you have to do. So I started learning it back then, a long time ago. And I've applied it to all my lessons. In fact, every lesson I teach, I start out with some self-image psychology. Because if you don't think you can do it, you won't. Right. you got to believe in yourself first. Right. So, so if you'd had brain aerobics, you'd yeah. have had a one-time charge, you'd have gone in and reviewed the materials yeah. whenever you wanted to, refresh your course, absolutely from the comfort of your own home, instead yeah. of traveling to classrooms, yeah. writing checks oh, yeah. over and over. Yeah, and over I had again. to go down every week and take the workshop. Mm -hmm. I came back with my homework done, because Shirley was a tough on that. If you didn't do your homework, she was all over you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got to do your homework. But, um, actually, exercises. Your exercise. That's your right. homework. It's actually fun to do. It's not, it's not homework. Yeah. I hate homework. But the exercise surely gives you, you start to see changes in your life. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Just in your attitude. Attitude is everything. We all know that. Yeah. So reading these exercises for 21 days in a row. Why 21 days? Because that's how long it takes to make a new habit or get rid of an old habit. So it's important to do these exercises every day. At least if you want to change mm -hmm. your life. And most people want to change their life from who they are to who they want to be. So how do you get there? There's a big canyon between who you are and who you want to be. Like standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon. Here's the person you are. On the other side of the Grand Canyon is the person you want to become. The other self-image. How do you get there? Just, you know, every step in the right is in the right direction is success, right? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not. The first step off the Grand Canyon could be a doozy, mm -hmm. okay? But if you know the path, and that's what we teach with brain aerobics, it teaches you the path to how to get to where you want to become. Actually, I read my exercises every day when I get up mm -hmm. in the morning. Actually, I used to put them on the bathroom mirror, but now I've done this for so many decades, they're memorized. You know, this is the beginning of a new day. I've been given this day to use that so will. What I do today is important because I'm exchanging a new day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever, living in its place wherever I have traded for it. I pledge to myself this should be for better health, greater wealth, divine wisdom, and more success. So I should not regret the price I paid for this day. Great. It's automatic. Okay. So a band you had was living in Phoenix with Charles and... Oh yeah, and uh, Shirley, you had a mentor. That I had a mentor. Anytime, oh, she was wonderful. She was visit. calling me. Yeah, I didn't have to call her. She called me, kept me on track. Did you get your goal? Did you write your affirmation? She did all those things. So how are you going to mentor thousands of brain aerobic students? How am I going to mentor them? Yeah, right here with the website. Great. So you're going to do some webinars? Oh, of course I am. Right. We'll have some webinars. I'm always giving some speeches. Q We're going to put those speeches on the mm -hmm. website so people mm -hmm. can watch them. And of course, we'll have maybe some um, webinars where people can ask questions. I'll give some answers. And uh, that will help everybody as well. So you can actually have people email you questions for the next webinar. Mm -hmm. Hey, these I've correlated all the questions and there seems to be a trend. Let's yeah. take a, make a point of you know addressing that. 
bringing clarity to it. The workshop I have taught myself in the past individuals. Mm -hmm. Everybody seems to have the same things they come up with. First of all, it takes them a while sometimes to buy in. They need to read the 21 X-day exercises all in a row. Mm -hmm. They come back after the first workshop and say, did you read it for the last seven days? No, I had to start over again. Okay, That seems to be a common thing. And then when they write their affirmations, they struggle with it a little bit. But we give a step-by-step -step directions on how to do it correctly. And after I correct one or two corrections, because you don't want to do it wrong, you want to do it right. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to be successful, is to do it right. See, books teach you what to do. The workshop teaches you how to apply it to your life. So, and stick with that. If you, if you, it's not what you know, what you know is what you use of what you know that matters. Mm -hmm. um, let me talk about this workshop. And I'm going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, the original book, written by Dr. Maxwell Maltz, was Psycho-Cybernetics, written in 1960. Um, very successful. It was printed in many languages around the world. It had over 30 million copies sold. It's still available in bookstores today. It's on my list of recommended books. Um, Charles Schreiber um, met Dr. Malls in about the mid-60s, about 1965. He gave up a, a career in architecture. He was very famous. He helped design Del Webb Sensitives. He thought this was more important to teach people how to apply the principles of self-image psychology to their life. Books teach you what to do, but not how to do it. Mm -hmm. Charles found that out himself because he co-authored a book with um, Dr. Maltz. The only book Dr. Maltz co-authored was, was with Charles Schreiber. And they taught workshops all over, and a lot of right here in the valley. And when Dr. Maltz died in 1975, Charles Schreiber and his wife Shirley became the foremost experts in the world on psychocybernetics and self-image psychology. They taught workshops right here in the valley. And I was lucky enough to take one back in the mid-70s. The bank I was working for said, now that we've promoted you into management, we want you to take this workshop, which I did. I took the workshop, I um, did my lessons. It was very interesting. But remember, it's not what you know, it's what you use of what you know. And when I was finished with the workshop, I went back and put my workbook up on the shelf in my closet and never touched it again. I did not apply it to my own life. Kind of a waste of my time, actually, looking back. At five years before I decided, hmm, I was actually changing jobs, leaving the bank I was working for, and decided to become self-employed and start my own business. And that's when I found that workbook. And I said, this will help me. But I've forgotten a lot of it, so I decided to take the workshop a second time. The beauty of brain aerobics is you can take the workshop over and over again. So you make sure you've got it right and you're applying it to your life. Well, I signed up to take the workshop again. Now, I hadn't seen Charles or Shirley Schreiber in five years. The only happened, thing that happened to me in those five years, if anything significant, was I grew a mustache. No, it was the 70s. Okay, I'm glad I don't have a picture of myself wearing my blue leisure suit. But, I walked into the workshop and Shirley turned around and said, Hi Wes, oh, something new. And it was then I realized this woman had a brain that I wanted to emulate. Because she remembered everything. She started asking me about my wife and my daughter and did I sell my house. I thought, wow, I have to learn this stuff. So the second time I took the workshop, I finally learned to use what I learned. And everyone, it's, it's up to you. Everyone can do that. You can choose to take the information, you learn this workshop, or you can put it aside and do nothing with it. It's your choice. See, I use the word commitment. Yeah. Because people, for example, I got married in 1968. Mm -hmm. All my friends got married too after high school. Okay? It was just a thing you do. Every single one of them had a goal of living happily ever after. They all walked down the aisle and said, I'm going to live happily ever after. How many of them did? Okay? What some of them lacked was commitment. Nobody had a goal of, well, we'll be happily married for seven years and then that bum will do something 
crummy and screw things up, or we'll have this problem or that problem, and so after seven years we'll get a divorce. No one had that as their goal. Okay. Mm-hmm. My wife and I walked down the aisle and had a commitment to each other and before God that this was forever. And if you approach a lot of your goals in life that way, okay, with a commitment to reaching those goals, not just trying for them. In fact, my favorite quote is from Star Wars by Yoda. You know, do it or don't, there is no try. Yeah. Do it or don't, there is no try. So, if you're going to make this work, you've got to apply it to your life. Okay? And you have to be committed for it. So, it works for me. I've done very well in every phase of my life. It's not just about financial. It's physical, mental, social, family. It's not just um, financial. And it's spiritual as well. And that's where faith comes in. Matter of fact, when I first learned about self-image psychology, and it was working for me, um, my wife said, we're Christians. This sounds like hocus pocus. Well, I was reading my Bible just a couple of days later and came across a verse, Mark eleven twenty four. Ask for anything, believe you've already received it, and yours. Ask. First of all, you have to ask. If you don't ask, you don't get. Believe. Does that work? Back to faith again. Believe you have already received it, and it is yours. And actually, it's kind of funny, because it wasn't Dr. Moltz who came up with this concept. It was written 2,000 years ago in the Bible, Mark 11, 24, that those words were spoken by Jesus. Kind of interesting. It gave me some credence to what I was practicing with self-image psychology. made it acceptable for me. There's a couple more secrets, too, that we're going to teach at the end of the workshop that I teach in my book as well. Matter of fact, people can download my book for free. Seeing is Achieving, Invisible Walls, How to Break Through to Achieve Success. You see, the self-image we all have does create boundaries. There's these invisible walls we create. They have our high, how, how, how far we can go, and they have our low. Okay? You're not going to be below your low self-image unless you lower your self-image. Okay? If your low is down low here, but even lower than that is, you know, dying in a gutter as a drug addict or an alcoholic or committing suicide. That won't happen to you if it's below your self-image. Now, do people lower their self-image and see themselves doing those things? Well, certainly that's the case. But people also have a maximum on their self-image, just how far they can go. Uh, speaking in the money part of it, making $100,000 might be above their self-image. So every time they get to the top of their self-image, they self-destruct. It could be $100,000 a year, it could be $100,000 a month, a week, a day, I don't know. But if you can't see yourself above your self-image, it's not going to happen. So how do you break through that wall and see yourself at that higher level? Become the new self-image you want to be. And that's what the workshop is all about, is learning the methods the processes, and going through this step by step, doing the exercises every day, doing the workshop over the three weeks it takes to complete all four sections, um, will show you the pathway to become from the person you are now to become the self-image of the person you want to become. And it's always evolving. You know, just when you hit one goal, is that the end? No. You're always evolving. And you're becoming another person and reaching that person, becoming that next level as well. It's exciting. Yep.